problem number 27, I'd like to find the intervals on which the function f of x is equal to 3 cosine of 3x is increasing and decreasing on the interval uh, negative pi to pi. Okay, so what's different about this problem is we actually have an interval on which we want to uh, figure out where it's increasing and decreasing and not just everywhere for the function. So I'm only interested in values that are in between negative pi and pi. All right, so, but a lot of the things that we're going to do here are exactly the same. I still need to find the critical points of this function, but I only need to find the critical points that fall inside of this interval. So let's take the derivative, set it equal to zero, see what our critical points end up being. So I'll take the derivative of f of x equals three cosine of three x. So I get f prime of x is equal to, well, three is a constant, so it just stays around. And then I need to take the derivative of cosine of three x. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of three x times the derivative of three x by the chain rule. So I have to multiply by an additional three. So I could write that f prime of x is equal to uh, 3 times 3 is 9, and I have a negative, so this is negative 9 sine of 3x. Okay, so I've got a derivative for my function, and now I want to set this thing equal to 0 and solve for x. So if I set it equal to 0, then I get 0 is equal to negative 9 sine of 3x. Uh, of course, this means that what? Um, negative 9, I can divide both sides by negative 9, and I just get that 0 equals sine of 3x. Okay, and now I need to know where exactly, for what values of x, does 3x uh, make sine 0? Okay, so what I need to do is I need to think about this for a second. What can I plug in for x that would make this sine 0? Well, I know that sine is 0 at 0. So if x is 0, I get 3 times 0 is 0, and sine of 0 is 0. So 0 would get the job done. So if I'm writing down my critical points, one of them is x is equal to 0. Uh, the question is, is that the only one? So what's the next time that sine is 0 after 0? Well, it's not until you get to what? Uh, pi. At pi, sine is also 0. So what I could do is I could say, OK, well, what would x have to be so that 3 times x is pi? Well, I guess that x would have to be pi divided by 3 because pi divided by 3 times 3 is pi, and that would give me 0. So uh, that would do it, pi over 3. So pi over 3 is also a critical value. And notice that pi over 3 is inside of my interval. Okay, similarly, uh, the next time that I would get 0 is at 2 pi. So if I put in 2 pi over 3, that would do the job also. So 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3 would do it too. But notice that 3 pi over 3, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So uh, if I had 3 pi over 3, that's just pi. So um, pi over 3 gives me pi. 2 pi over 3 gives, uh, I'm sorry, gives me 0 when I take sine of it. And then I could plug in pi. Well, pi is sine of 3 pi is, in fact, 0. But pi is one of my boundary points. So it is a critical value, but maybe not a very interesting one because it's on the side of the interval. Okay, but in a similar way, I could go back to the negative pi over 3 and the negative 2 pi over 3 and the negative pi, and that would also be true. So other critical points are x is equal to negative pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3, and negative pi. 
So we've got a whole bunch of critical points here. And what we need to do now is if we're trying to figure out where this thing is increasing and decreasing, we have to put these all on our number line. So let's say that this is my negative pi, and up here is pi. So we've got 0, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, negative pi over 3, and negative 2 pi over 3. And now we need to test a point in each one of these intervals to see if this thing is increasing or decreasing on that interval. In other words, is it positive or is it negative? Now, sometimes this is uh, tedious because it's kind of like, okay, something between 0 and pi over 3. But we can think of something, how about pi over 6? So if we look at pi over 6, remember we need to plug this back in to the derivative function, not into the original function. You've got to plug in to the derivative function. So if I take something like pi over 6 and plug it into the derivative, well, 3 times pi over 6 is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is, think about it for a second, is 1, right? And negative 9 times 1 is certainly a negative number. So these guys are negative. So I just took something in here, plugged it in here in my head, and I figured out, oh, that's going to be a negative value, so these have to be negative. Okay, let's do it again. Let's take something between pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. A good example of that would be pi over 2. So if I took pi over 2 and plugged it in here for x, I get 3 pi over 2. Well, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9, and so this is positive. Let's do another one. What about something between 2 pi over 3 and pi? Well, uh, how about, let's see, uh, 5 pi over 6 would do it. 5 pi over 6. So if I plugged in 5 pi over 6 here, the 3 and the 6 would cancel, and I'd get 5 pi over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 2 is 1. Negative 9 times 1 is negative, so these are negatives. And we start to see the pattern here. These are going to be positives, negatives, positives. And you should check each one of those to make sure that that's the case. Now, now that I've got uh, my positives and my negatives here, now I can say where this thing is increasing and decreasing. Because remember, positive means going up, negative means going down. Positive is up, negative is down, positive is up, negative is down. And this shouldn't be surprising to us because we know what a cosine curve looks like. Cosine, <clears throat> it starts out, it goes down, and then up, and then down, and so on. <clears throat> so we would expect it to go down, up, down, up, all the way across, and so it does. So now all we have to do is say, well, where is it going up and where is it going down? It's going up where I have positives. It's going down where I have negatives. So it's going up, or F is increasing, on the following intervals. Well, from negative pi up to negative 2 pi over 3, and uh, it's going up from negative pi over 3 to 0, and from pi over 3 up to 2 pi over 3. Then f is decreasing on the intervals from negative 2 pi over 3 to negative pi over 3. This is where the arrows are going down or where I have negatives. And from 0 to pi over 3 and from 2 pi over 3 to 
5. And that's my answer. So the general policy is take the derivative, find the critical points, put the critical points on a number line, see where the positives and the negatives fall, and then you can say where it's increasing.